E. Marcus Pratica was uh, quite an interesting character. He, I would say that he had a lot of serendipity in terms of his career, uh, because when he came here from studying in Edinburgh, he um, came out to Seattle in 1909 to see the Alaska Yukon Pacific Exposition, which is grounded him in a place that he probably never would have arrived. And then he coincidentally uh, met Alexander Pantages, who was in the midst of a major career of building theaters, which eventually became coast to coast in Canada. And Pratika found him to be the perfect architect for his fantasy vaudeville houses, which he, being Greek, wanted to um, have in a classical Greek style. And Pratika was a fascinating, beautiful renderer, illustrator, and so he filled the bill. And so through his meeting with Pantages, he did some wonderful theaters, including in Seattle and Tacoma and, um, and San Francisco in 1911, 12, 13. And then um, he again had the fortune of meeting Joe Godstein, who was in his 20s, and they became great friends. And Joe Godstein was involved at that point with C.D. Stimson in the purchase of the, the lot on a Pike Street for a theater. Um, in the interim, he also designed the Crystal Pool for C.D. Stimson. And that still exists, the exterior still exists, part of it, and so you can see his, his intent to carry the Greek into more of an Italian Renaissance mode with lots more ornamentation, uh, lots of Italian Renaissance design figures and grotesques, and uh, really do it up in a, in a way that Seattle hadn't seen before. And so I think that prepared him in terms of the form and the corner entry with the arched entry to attract people to the place to moving into doing the Coliseum Theater. So I would say that he, he, the other thing that grounded him in Seattle was that he became a draftsman for E.W. Houghton, um, I think before he met Pantages. And Houghton was doing the Moore Theater and, and, and ended up doing a lot of theaters, not just in Seattle, but in the Northwest. So he had great background and experience with another architect who was a theater guru. Um, so I think in, in terms of luck and good fortune and the right contacts and having great talent and imagination, he was able to create a career for himself that he might not have had if he hadn't had that stroke of things coming together. He was able to build a reputation for great sight lines uh, access to upper floors in a gracious way uh, without lots of stairs, with use of ramps. So spatially he understood how theaters should operate and he took that into his knowledge base when he did the Coliseum Theater. So that had all the bells and whistles that he'd learned there. And he seems to have been adept at a lot of different styles. Um, so the Coliseum is probably the most flamboyant of the exteriors that one sees in his theaters, much more so than the more staid, pantages look, um, where it's just a few columns and, you know, but he just took advantage of what you could do with terracotta and many molds and lots of, uh, and places for lighting and, and thinking about wonderful canopies to have people be protected from the elements when they're waiting in line and a grand stained glass dome in which to enter that really teases you along from down the street and lights up that corner. Uh, so I think he, he learned about theater and what is theatrical and how to draw people in in a way that um, it was just the perfect time. We don't know who would have taken on the role of um, the great theater designer. We were a theater town, so we were certainly um, building theaters. There were other people who were doing it, 
Um, but he was even involved with Paramount Theater, which was supposed to be Rap and Rap of New York, but he had a hand in some of the design and probably more in the commercial building. Um, and then he was working till he was, he died at 81 or something. So um, I would say, and he loved, he was a very optimistic guy. People said he was a wonderful person to be around. And um, he continued to work through his 60s and 70s. And um, he did the Orpheum Theater in the late 20s. And then he was doing the remodel of the Civic Auditorium into the, the Opera House in 1962 for the World's Fair. So he never really stopped. And I remember um, at Historic Seattle, we have this map that he did in the 1940s that documented all of the neighborhood and downtown theaters at the time. So he was very much interested in having people understand the value of not just downtown theaters, but neighborhood theaters where people could go. And he designed lots of smaller theaters, including what, the Admiral, West Seattle, and one in, Bel in uh, Bremerton. Um, and I once interviewed um, a few of the drafts people worked with him. And, you know, they had good experiences with him. And they, it was a great learning experience. And the Coliseum had gone through so many changes by the 50s and 60s that it was hard to envision what it might have been because the canopy disappeared, the, the, uh, the interiors were changed. You no longer had the Japanese, um, you know, the, the Turkish men's smoking room and the Japanese lounges and the mother goose rooms for the kids. Um, so all that was gone.